Hello everyone and welcome to our capital investment decisions and the time value of money discussion. And we're going to be talking about four different models. And those capital budgeting models are payback period, accounting rate of return, net present value, internal rate of return. Now the first two, the payback period and the accounting rate of return, are models that are used for short-term decision making. And net present value and internal rate of return are used for long-term investment decisions. So let's start by defining what the payback period is. The payback period is the length of time it takes to recover in net cash inflows the cost of the capital outlay. Now, the capital outlay is simply what you invested in the investment, what, what you paid for it. It measures how quickly management expects to recover their investment dollars. Now, of course, we're going to have a formula for this as well. And that formula is the amount invested in the asset, or the cost of the asset, divided by the expected annual net cash inflows of the asset. Now, one thing special about this equation is that it can only be used if there are equal payments. In other words, those expected annual net cash inflows are equal. Now, with a payback period, it, it hopefully is a little obvious to you that the, the shorter the payback period, the better. If an investment is expected, like, for example, a piece of equipment, is expected to last you 10 years and you calculate the payback period and it pays itself back in six years, then it's paid itself back in less time than you expect it to be useful. So therefore it would be a good investment per the payback period. Here's an example where the payments are equal. The annual payments are equal. So I'd like for you to read this problem and calculate the payback period and determine if this is a good investment. So press pause on your player, calculate the payback period, determine if it's a good investment, then come back and we'll talk about it together. All right, so what you should have found is four years. So we took the cost of the investment, $1,236,100, and divided it by the annual cash payments, which were $309,025. So this investment's gonna pay itself back in four years. Now, is it a good investment? Well, the answer is yes, it's a good investment because you think or believe that it's gonna last eight years, and the investment's gonna pay itself back in four years. Therefore, this investment pays it back in half its useful life. Therefore, it's a good investment per the payback period. So what do we do or what happens when these net annual cash inflows are not equal? So let's look at a problem when that is the case. So here we have Mike's Hardware. They're adding a new product line that will require an investment of $1,454,000. Managers estimate that this investment will have a 10-year life and generate net cash inflows of $310,000 the first year, $280,000 the second year, and $240,000 each year thereafter for eight years. We need to compute the payback period and determine if Mike should invest in this new product line per the payback period. So remember, there are four different investment, investment models we're going to look at. We're, right now, we're only looking at payback periods. So all these, all these numbers that we're calculating we're determining an answer, whether it's a good or bad investment, specifically based on the payback period. So when we have a problem where the net cash inflows or annual cash inflows are not equal, we need to set up a little spreadsheet. And here is the spreadsheet we would want to set up. And we're just gonna fill out the information as, as we need to here. So the cash flow per year in year one was 310,000. Therefore, our balance at the end of year one would be 310,000. In year two, the cash flow was 280,000. So again, our running balance now, so 310,000 plus 280. Our balance at the end of year two would be 590,000. In year three forward, it's 240,000. 
So at the end of year three, I would have accumulated 830,000 with cash inflows. So we wanna keep going until we reach that magic number. And in this case, that magic number is the amount that we invested in the asset. So almost one and a half million. So we're gonna keep going until we reach that running balance. So in year four, it was 240,000. So now we're up to 1,070,000. In year five, it was also 240,000. So now we're up to 1,310,000. So we're almost there. In year six, brought in 240,000. So now we're at 1,550,000. So we've reached the goal here. And the number that we're looking for is somewhere right in between year five and year six. So there's that $1,454,000, somewhere in there. So we know it's gonna take more than five years to get our money back, but less than six years. So just knowing that, if it's gonna last eight years, we know it's a good investment. But I want us to be more specific, exactly how long is it? So we know that it's at least five years, and it's a portion of the sixth year. And I wanna know how much of the sixth year do we need? So we're gonna take that investment, 1,454,000, and we're gonna subtract the amount that we've accumulated at the end of year five. This is gonna tell me how much of year six I need. And I'm gonna divide that, because I need a proportion of year six, by the payment in year six. Okay, so that's gonna show me how much of that $240,000 in year six I actually need. So when you do the math here, you find it's 5.6 years for this investment to pay itself back.